Hello and welcome to the fifth tutorial in the Bootstrap 3 series. In this part we're going to be looking at implementing a grid system. We'll be using the source code from the fourth part of this series. If you don't have it, don't worry, there'll be a link in the description. A couple of tutorials ago, we already discussed the grid system and actually showed it on the Bootstrap website and, it, and it's amazing. But we are going to actually create a basic implement, implementation of the grid system that makes Bootstrap amazing. So let's go ahead and open up our project in a text editor. First what we need to do is create a div with the container class that will basically contain the meat of the website. You can have multiple containers, so you can maybe have a container for the header, maybe a container for the body, a container for the footer, you can have more as well but generally a bootstrap it, work, it works well regardless of how many containers you have but it allows you to contain code, manage it so generally you don't need too many, you'll probably be using other elements so we're going to put the h1 within this div tag so we're going to put div class, actually one second let me just undo all this and I will zoom in so people, let's say they are viewing on a mobile device she'll be able to see this a little better so we're going to do div class equals container this is a built-in class for bootstrap and what we're going to do now is just end this tag save it so what we're going to go and do now is just run this in our web browser and as you can see it's slightly moved to the right and we'll show you why let's inspect the element Let's just get rid of the console, go to the body, and here is our container class. And as you can see, it is 1170 pixels wide. And if we go down to here, we have, this is what we have. We have our element, which is the container. We have the padding at the sides. So in total, it is 1170 then we have the border and then we have the little margin which is at the right at the side there so if I resize it as you can see this is adjusting accordingly so the different sizes and if I just keep going down and down that's what happens so this is basically our container this is where our content will fit so let's just go off this a second go back to sublime text Let's implement some grid spaces, but, but before doing that we need a div with a class of row. So we're going to do div class equals row. And in here what we're going to do is put a div. And, this is, and the class for this is going to be column dash medium dash four. And inside this we're going to do another div. And for this class we're going to put, we'll explain all of this in a moment, grey dash box and in here I was going to put box 1 forward slash div forward slash div so this column dash md dash 4 is a built in class for bootstrap and it basically says this column on a medium screen device should be 4 grid spaces wide, remember you can have up to 12 grid spaces so this is going to be a third of the grid and this little div inside here with the class gray box that's not built that's not built into bootstrap we're gonna be creating this ourselves we're gonna be styling it up here we're just gonna add a few basic styling to it so you, we can just demonstrate the grid a little better so what we're gonna do is copy and paste this I'm just going to change one thing here, two, three, four, five, and six. Save it, and now what we're going to do is just add some styling so you can see what we are trying to do better. So we are going to put styling in a style tag right here. We recommend that you don't do this. You re recommend that you actually put it in a separate file and just include that file into your code house, maintain code better. So in here it's going to do dot gray dash box and for this we're going to do a background color of well I think you can guess gray we're going to do a height value of 200 pixels go margin dash bottom 
of 10 pixels. This is just so we separate the different grid spaces out. As you'll see in a moment, what happens to them. I'm going to do font dash size colon 2em text align center. And we're just going to put a pad in within, within it of 80 pixels. And this will just align the box one text in the box two and so forth in the center of the box. So let's save it, go back to our web browser, refresh, and what we have is six boxes. And you might be thinking, why are they one, two, three, and one, two, three? It's based on the grid system that we've used, because it's column, medium, and four grid spaces out of 12, so it's four, eight, 12. So you can't fit more than 12 grid spaces on one line. And if we just go back, and that, that's really that four, eight, 12, four, eight, 12. If I start resizing, something amazing happens. Look, I resize, it goes a little smaller, it adjusts, and then I re and then I resize again, and it's just all gone onto one column because this is what a mobile device would look like. Because if you were to have separate boxes on one row, it'd be too small to read, you wouldn't be able to fit the content, and the content will be overflowing out of that box, for example. And so a lot of mobile devices or mobile devices have a similar layout and then on a bigger screen so maybe a desktop or a really big tablet this is how it will look so you, you can have multiple boxes in this example in one or on the screen at once so if we just go back to sublime so what we've done is created like I said the column medium four and so forth we can now run the website as you can see it's working very well and we've looked at the 12 grid spaces, we've looked at the column medium. We are going to end this tutorial. There is still a lot more to discuss in terms of grids, especially grid sizes, but because there's so much, we're going to separate that into the next tutorial, which will cover different grid sizes, because you may have noticed, like I said, this is medium. If the, if they're the medium, if they're a small, large, etc. Yes, there is. And you'll have to stay tuned for the next tutorial. If you have any questions, feel free to message us at support at sonarsystems.co.uk. The email will be in the description. You can comment on this video or just directly message us via YouTube. All the required links for source code will also be in the description. And as usual, thank you for watching and I hope you have a great day.